Hello and welcome to another Yellowfin Tips and Tricks video. In this video, we're going to talk about a topic that um, I get asked about quite often, which is, hey, I have a date column, I have some sales numbers in another column, I need to be able to show year over year on a line chart like you're seeing in front of yourselves right now on your screen. We have each line representing a different year of sales. So this is a very common question. Um, want to take some time out today and show you how we would go about doing that in Yellowfin. We'll talk about the concept so that way we understand it, and then we'll show about we'll show you a little secret that uh, I would venture to say not many of you know about in Yellowfin that would make your life a lot easier. So if you're watching this video, this is probably something that you have sat in front of before. You're you have a date, maybe your your sales date, your transaction date. And then you have another column with the invoice amount for that sale. And you're saying to yourself, how do I get this uh, to represent each year in a different line on a chart? So what happens in Yellowfin if we just plot this the way it is? Is it going to give us a line per year? Let's find out. So using the auto charter, we'll drag our fields in. And we'll notice right away, nope. All it did was give us from 2009 all the way up to 2016 on one chart. And that's probably because we only have one series, right? If we go back to the data tab here, um, want to understand the, the concept of a series. So this metric here is the equivalent of one series. So using some invoice, we can put that on our on our chart and just as you saw it plotted that one series so what we need to be able to generate multiple lines is multiple series right so how do we how would we do this how would we take the invoice amount here if I drag in another invoice amount you know how do I filter that column on 2014 let's say and then I add another one in and I say how do I fil this filter this one on 2015 this is where it gets confusing and this is the problem that we're going to address. So we do need a series per column or a series per year and that equates to a column per year. So we want say this first column to be 2015, maybe the second column to be 2014 and maybe this third column be 2013. And that way we can take each of those series, drop it into our auto charter there and it should build out a line chart with a line per year. So how do we go about doing this in Yellowfin? Well, we do it with our subqueries. So that's this plus button here. Um, and the goal of these subqueries is to have a common field you can join on, and then you'll bring in the invoice amount on that subquery and filter it based on, say, 2014, on the year. So each subquery will be a different year, essentially. The problem is, I have an invoice date here and it's a specific date. How do I join and make sure I get all the records? It, it, it's confusing, right? Because if you have multiple days on, on, on one year and multiple days on another year, you could have um, potentially a lot of joins blow up, right? Because you could have a many-to-many -many relationship and all of a sudden you have more records, your numbers aren't right. So let's, let's explore that concept a little bit. Um, by drawing it out. I'm, I'm a visual learner. I hope this helps you out a little bit. So here's a quick representation of what we have right, of what we want to get to in Yellowfin. So we have our main table here, which is the main query in Yellowfin. And then we have our first subquery, which is subquery one. And you can see that we're trying to filter it on 2016. In the main, we've already filtered on 2015. And then if we wanted, say, 2014, we would do another subquery over here, call it subquery 2, X, Y, etc. Um, I've put X and Y as the column names, just um, as <laughs> it's much shorter to write out here, but X is our date, Y is obviously our sales value here. So let's go over the concept. So right now, we need to join these two tables together. So when we do a subquery, we have to have some sort of column that relates, right? So in our case, it's date. That's what we're hoping to join off of. But if we attempt this, is it going to work? Well, from the main table here, main x, we have 1, 1, 20, 15. So if I was to join that to subquery 1, let's put, um, you know, let's put 1, 1, 20, what was it, 
is that? 15 from the first table. Does that equal, let's say the first record here, 1, 1, 20, 16? Well, no, that doesn't, that is not equal. So that join isn't going to happen. It's not going to return any data. Let's see if we can look at the second one here. 2, 1, 20, 15, 2, 1, 20, 15 is equal to, it's not equal to 1, 1, 20, 16. Is it equal to 2, 1, 20, 16? Nope, that's not equal. How about 3, 10, 20, 16? Nope, that's not equal. So you can see the pattern here. Unless the dates are exactly the same, it's not going to join. Whether you do a left join, an inner join, they're not common. So how do we go about solving this problem? Well, one way we can do this, let's choose a different color here so we could see it. Let's do F5. Um, so one way we can do this is by using the month name because that's what we want to see, right? We essentially want a graph with something like Jan through December down here and have it show, you know, a line per series here. Maybe that's what it is. Call this one 2016. This one is 2015. Let's go with. So that's what we want. So we would rather have this date here. Instead of showing this 1 1 2016, I'd rather have it rolled up to a month so I can show Jan or December. So we essentially are saying we want something like this. If the first column, let's make this, uh, let's do X, let's do Y. We essentially want each of these tables to have the month name. So we see Jan, Feb, all the way down to December. And then we have our numbers here aggregated. So January is, let's call it, 200 February is 150 all the way down to December is 205 let's say so if we have a second table here that has the exact same values so we have a filter actually let's talk about this we have a filter here of this one's filtered on 2015 but we don't see that in the data we just see the month name the only way we know is because we filtered it on 2015 if I do the same thing on 2016 here what do you think is going to happen? So if I have X and Y, and we have the same month names all the way down, Jan 200, uh, let's do another Jan of 215 here. You're now saying let's join these two columns together, X's, just like we did up here. And now it's going to say, does Jan equal, whoops, equal Jan? Yes, it does. So now that joins and that's going to return a result, right? And actually, I shouldn't have done this here. I put Jan twice. I said you would roll it up. So technically, what this would be is, um, I'm going to scratch this out here. This would be February, right? We would have each month one time because we've aggregated the numbers. So Jan equals Jan, perfect. Feb equals Feb, perfect. And then I can drag in the column from my main query and I can drag in the column from my subquery. And now all of a sudden I have one column with 2015 and one column with 2016. So that's the concept that we're trying to get to with this. So let's show how we do that in Yellowfin. So I'm back into Yellowfin now. And again, remember I have this date and I need to turn this into a month name somehow. Hmm, how am I going to do that? Well, there are a couple ways you can do this. I could convert this to using the month function and convert that into a string, some sort of like a var car, and that way I can compare the two together. But that's a little complex. Why don't we make this easier? I'm just going to jump right into the view here, and we're going to use the date function in the view. So we'll step on over to the prepare step. And once on the prepare step, we'll go down to the plus button, we'll click date function, and we'll select the field. So we're using invoice date. And we want the month out of the invoice date. And the format, we want the month name. Okay, so it's going to look like August. Perfect. And what folder do I want to put it in? Let's put it in the time folder. We'll click save. And let's open up that time folder. And there it is. So month invoice date month here. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now that we have that, let's publish it. Let's get rid of this clone here. Perfect. And we'll click, 
Uh, we'll put it into the tutorial KPI publish. So now we're back to our report after coming out of that view. We can go into the time folder and here's that invoice date month. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Jump in, put in, excuse me, our month name here. Perfect. Um, and I tell you what I should have done. I should have converted this to a um, dimension. I left it as a metric. So I tell you what, I'm gonna go right back into the view and be right back with you. Okay, so I have converted it back to a uh, dimension. As you can see, it's yellow now. Um, extremely simple to do. All you have to do is hover over um, this metric in the view and change the uh, type to a dimension. Very simple. So now that we have the month name, which is what we were looking for based on our, our drawing, and we have the invoice amount, Let's go in, or actually first, why don't we do this? Why don't we filter the invoice date? And in the main query, let's say 2015 is what we're going to go for. So we'll go ahead and click, let's define that value. And we don't need to go back and forth on this one here. We're just saying we want 2015 of January 1st all the way through 20. 15 December 31st. Perfect. So now this query is showing me just, and I'm going to add a total here so you can see this. This query is showing me just 2015. So it's 6.62 million. Now I want to see, uh, let's say 2014 in the next one is what I want to see. So we'll open up a subquery. We're going to do an append and a basic, meaning we're joining it on itself. And we'll leave it as a left outer join. That's fine. And we're here's that month. So we're saying the month name equals, and in this subquery here, it's a month name. And then we want to filter the invoice date, correct? Yep, the invoice date. We'll click Save. Okay, now I've filtered this subquery on 2014. I'm going to drag in the invoice amount. And do you think this is going to equal 6 million when we total it up? Let's see, total sum, 12 million, boom. So there we go. We now have 2015 in one column and 2014 in another column. So why don't we go ahead and just do some quick formatting so we know what this is. This one is 2015. And this one here is going to be 2014. Perfect. So now I know what those columns mean. Let's jump over to the Charts tab. And this is where it gets very simple on our side here. Let's drag in the month. We already have 2015 in there. So let's drag 2014 in. And instead of doing a bar chart here, let's do a line chart. That's what we were after this whole time. And there we have it. So we have 2015 as the dark line, and we have 2014 as the lighter blue line there. So it's that simple in Yellowfin, and that's actually the more complex way to do this with Yellowfin. So just putting in the, or doing these subqueries is the concept that you want to understand because you can take this concept and apply it to doing many other things, right? You can filter on um, not only year, you could filter on maybe a gender or something like that, and then you can have different lines plotted. So we just have to think about series and we need multiple series when we're trying to filter the same data. So that's what we did here. We used multiple series, one for 2014, one for 2015, and now we have two lines on the, on the chart here. Now, how can we make this even easier in Yellowfin? Well, let me show you how. So I'm gonna jump back to the data tab here, and I'm actually gonna get rid of my subquery. I don't want it anymore. I want an easier way to build this rather than using subqueries. I mean, subqueries aren't bad, they're, they're easy, and um, it's not something that was very burdensome. So what do I want? Well, let's change this column name here. It's not 2015 anymore. We're just gonna have it as, oh, uh, let's just call it invoiced. Because it's not gonna be specific to a year. And you know what? We're not gonna use this made up column that we just did here. 
we're going to use just the invoice date. What if I have only the invoice date, the granular invoice date, and the invoice amount? How do I put a line for each year on a graph? I thought that wasn't possible without subqueries. Well, it is. First thing, make sure you have the drill down turned off. It needs to be off to do this. Second, let's go ahead and actually change this invoice date here. We're going to encompass all the way back to, let's do 2013. So we'll do Jan 1 of 2013 all the way to 2015. So we're going to get some more values. And then let's step over to the Charts tab here. Now once in Charts, just drag things over like you normally would. So you have your invoice, you have your invoice date, and you say, well, that looks an awful lot like the same, Tom. There's, there's no difference here. We are, um, just a quick note, make sure you've chosen line. Don't use the auto charter here. Click on line, put your invoice date down, your invoice amount. But again, you're still seeing that nothing has changed. We'll come up into this gear icon, and this is where your mind is going to be blown here. Click on time format. And you see this, yearly comparison. Display multiple years on the x-axis of the chart with one line per series. Well, I'll go ahead and turn that on, close out. My mind is blown. We have 2013, 2014, and 2015 all on different lines. I didn't have to go to the view and create that January, February column. I didn't have to create those subqueries. I would have had to create three subqueries here. All I did was drag my two columns in. I moved over, I turned drill down off. I moved over to the charts tab, dragged invoice date in, invoice amount, went to the gear icon, made sure I was on the line chart, not the auto charter, clicked on my gear icon and went down to time format and then clicked, hey, I want a, uh, a line per year. That simple guys. Hope you learned something today. I know this video was a little long, but we wanted to make sure we covered that subquery concept um, fairly well as that's something that um, is, could help you out if you wanted to do something other than just sort these lines by years. And we also have set analysis too. I didn't get into that, but there's um, I think a couple videos up on the university about set analysis if you're curious, and I might even do a video on set analysis here in the near future. Thanks for watching.